Today, we're going to learn about Chebyshev's inequality. If you haven't already, please watch the video on Markov's inequality first. The link is below in the description. Because really, Chebyshev's inequality is just a special case of Markov's inequality. So we definitely want to make sure we have a good understanding of Markov's inequality first. So Chebyshev's inequality tells us that the probability that the absolute value of x minus mu being at least t is less than or equal to the variance of x over t squared. What this means is that the probability that x is at least t away from its mean cannot be too big. Okay, so the probability that x is far away from its mean, at least t away from its mean, cannot be too big. A note on notation, uh, throughout this presentation, I will be using e of x and mu interchangeably throughout. These are the mean or the expected value of a random variable. And I will be using the var of x to describe the variance. We might also see this as sigma squared in other coverage of Chebyshev's inequality, but these mean the same thing. So a reminder of Markov's inequality. Markov's inequality tells us that if we let x be a non-negative random variable, meaning it's always at least zero, that the probability that x is at least t is less than or equal to e of x over t, or mu over t, same thing. So Markov's inequality gives us an upper bound on the probability of x being at least t. Visually, that means that we can say that these yellow areas have an upper bound, that they are not too big, that the probability of being big is relatively small. The probability of being big can't be too big. That's what Markov's inequality tells us. Now, Chebyshev's inequality tells us that the probability of being far away from the mean can't be too big. So Chebyshev's inequality can be expressed visually here with these yellow areas, saying these yellow areas cannot be too big. Uh, one application of Chebyshev's inequality would be to bound the error of a statistical estimator. So what I mean is, if this is the distribution of our error term, and we want the error to be on average zero, then it would be really nice to say that the probability that we get a big error these yellow probabilities, is very small. So we could say that the probability of the error being big is small. And this would be a good thing in statistics. So this is one application of Chebyshev's inequality. So just to compare Markov and Chebyshev's inequality, Markov's inequality, one nice thing about it is that it only requires knowledge of the mean, e of x, the first moment, whereas Chebyshev's inequality requires knowledge of the variance, the second moment. So we need a little bit more knowledge about our random variable to be able to use Chebyshev's inequality. Markov's inequality required that we have a non-negative random variable, whereas Chebyshev's inequality is valid for any random variable, as long as it has a defined variance. So Chebyshev's inequality is more widely applicable. And Markov's inequality gives us a bound on the probability of being greater than a certain value, whereas Chebyshev's gives us a bound on the probability of being far away from the mean. Uh, both of these are useful in different contexts. So we want to know, what is the probability that the absolute value of x minus mu is at least t? Well, one thing we can do is we can square both things inside of this probability statement. This is the exact same probability because I did the same thing to both sides inside of the probability. Now, why did we do this? Well, x minus mu squared is a non-negative random variable, right? It's a random variable. It's random because it depends on x, and it's non-negative because we squared it. So we can actually apply Markov's inequality to this new random variable. So this is Markov's inequality. So let's just apply this here. Okay, so uh, using Markov's inequality, we show that the probability is less than or equal to the expected value of that random variable, e of x minus mu squared, over the thing here, over t squared. Okay, so that was just applying Markov's inequality to our new random variable, x minus mu squared. But the expected value of x minus mu squared is just the variance, right? That's what the variance actually is. So we can replace that with variance of x over t squared, and we're done. We've just proved Chebyshev's inequality. Chebyshev's inequality is just an application of Markov's inequality to the random variable x minus mu squared. But let's try to understand what Chebyshev's inequality tells us visually. So just like we did in the Markov's inequality video, Let's fix the probability of x minus mu, absolute value, being at least t, by building these green walls. Now, with these walls in place, is there an upper limit on the variance? Well, I can move these red people further and further away 
from the walls. No, there is no upper limit on the variance because I can move them as far away as I could possibly want to. Is there a lower limit on the variance? How can I make these things as close to the mean as possible? Well, let's push everything as close to the mean as possible while respecting the walls. So I'm going to move every blue person towards the middle, towards mu, and line them up on mu. And I'm going to move all the red people to the green wall. That's as close as I can get them to the mean. This is the lowest the variance could possibly be. So what is the variance? What is the expected value of x minus mu squared? Well, remember the law of total expectation. I can break the expected value of any random variable into the part that is close to the mean inside of the walls and the part that is outside of the walls in red. So what is the expected value of x minus mu squared for the people that are in the middle of the green walls? Well, all of them are at the mean. So x minus mu squared for all of these people is zero. Their square distance from the mean is zero. So that is zero. Now, what about these people in red? What is their squared distance from the mean? Well, they are distance t away from the mean. So their squared distance from the mean here is t squared. So we replace that with t squared. So remember, this is the variance. So let's go back to calling it the variance. This is zero. And look what we have here. We have the variance of x is equal to t squared times the probability of x minus mu absolute value being at least t. And remember, this is a lower bound because we pushed everything towards the center. So let's just bring the t squared around to the other side of the equation. And then let's flip this all around. And we have Chebyshev's inequality. The probability of x minus mu absolute value being at least t is less than or equal to the variance of x over t squared. Let's see this in an example. So suppose that the expected value of x or the mean is 0. Let's let t be 2 and let's let the variance of x be 3. And let's try to apply Chebyshev's inequality using these more concrete numbers. Well, what Chebyshev's inequality tells us is that the probability that the absolute value of x minus 0, right, so we're plugging in mu there, uh, being at least 2, our t, is less than or equal to the variance of x, which is 3, over 2 squared, our t squared. And if we simplify everything, what that tells us is the probability uh, that the absolute value of x is at least 2 is less than or equal to 3 out of 4. And let's see why this has to be the case. Because let's suppose that the probability that the absolute value of x were at least 2 was equal to 0 0.9. Well, then even if we push every observation as close to the center as possible, meaning we push the people in the middle to 0, the mean, and we push everyone on the outsides to 2 and negative 2, then what would the variance be? What would the expected value of x minus mu squared be? That is the variance. And we can use the law of total expectation and say, well, in the middle, the people in blue are zero away from the mean. And the people in red are two away from the mean. So their distance from the mean squared is two. And we said that we were going to assume that we knew these probabilities, that the probability on top was 0.1 and the probability on bottom was 0.9 which gives us that the variance would be 3.6. And remember, this is actually a lower bound, right? We're saying the variance of x would be at least 3.6 because this is as small as it can be because we pushed everybody towards the center. But we have a contradiction. We said to start out, we know the variance of x is 3. So it can't be at least 3.6. So this gives us the soul of Chebyshev's inequality. Chebyshev's inequality tells us that not too many things can be far away from the mean. Otherwise, the variance would be higher than we know the variance actually is. That's the end. Please like and subscribe for more statistics videos.